Welcome to Google Plus. This is Google's social media type of site that you can use for creating your own personal learning network, sharing information, connecting with colleagues, following thought leaders in your field that you're interested in, and, and joining communities around topics that are of interest to you. So to get to Google Plus, you can either go to the waffle or the checkerboard, whichever you call it, in the top right of a window in which you're signed into Google Apps. Click on it and you can pull down to Google Plus or G Plus. You can also go to plus.google.com and access it. When you're in Google Plus, you have a side menu here. If you're not seeing the same view, you're probably in the classic Google Plus, and if you go down this bottom left corner, you can click to go to the new version of Google Plus. So when you're seeing the side menu, if it disappears or it's not there, just click on those three bars at the top left corner, and that shows and hides that side menu. So your home is your feed, your stream of information coming from people you're following or organizations or communities you're following. So I tend to follow leaders in the tech educational technology field. Here's Google for Work talking about something. Um, there are a couple I've put in here for fun when I've been training, for instance, knitting, if you're interested in knitting. Uh, there's also some different things. Here is from, from Don, Donnie Piercy that's talking about Gmailify. Um, the Google Art Project is here, so lots of different topics that will come through, much like a Facebook feed in some ways. When you're here, if you like something that you're seeing, if you see something that's of interest to you, or you think it's a great post, you can plus one it. So for instance, if I wanted to, here's a way I can add formulas to an awesome tables file cabinet, and I could watch that video if I liked it, I would just click plus one. I can also comment it by clicking the little comment bar, and I can add a comment and then post it. And I can share it out with these little three, that little triangular kind of icon. And these are the places I can either copy the link, share it to Facebook, Twitter, or to G Plus myself. I can reshare it. So that's kind of the interface of the stream. And then as you're going down the side, you also have collections, which we can talk about. They're actually focused around a theme that you might be interested in. So if I, they always give you some featured ones that you might want to join and follow. Some that you're following, if you have some you followed, like I'm following Google Expeditions collection, or just something you've created, maybe one on polar bears because I'm interested in that. It's just a collection of favorite posts around a topic you're interested in. Communities we'll talk about in a minute, but we'll want to go down to Profile. And in Profile, this is where we can actually edit our own profile. We can, as you see, make a banner for our Google Plus profile and add our photo if we want to. Some people prefer to put a photo of a pet or just a nice photo that they've taken somewhere. So if I go to Edit Profile, now I have the opportunity to click here to edit my banner and click here to enter my image or edit my image. I can also go to this little eye in the circle and now I can go to my about.me.google.com page where I can control all the information people see about me. I can put as much or as little as I want. I usually like to at least put educator so they know I'm an educator uh, and not just some random um, person joining. You can also choose what you want to show and what you don't want to show. So things can be public when you mark them that way, or they can be private if you mark them the other way. You just simply click on it and you can choose how you want to, to share that. And then I can go back to my tab. Make sure you've saved that. Go back to my tab. I'm going to cancel this because I don't need to save that. And in my tab, I'm back at my Google Plus page because it took me out of that for just a second. So while I'm in my Google Plus place on my profile, I can see the most recent posts that I've made. I can see some of the groups that I've, I've joined or that I'm working with. And here are some of the posts that I've made or I've reshared. I can also go to people. And this is where I want to go to find someone to follow. So first of all, I can find people. I just am seeing people that they've suggested for me. They suggested that maybe knowing my interest, it's that personalized learning, that I might want to follow Shannon Miller, and I happen to know she's an educator. So I'm going to follow her, and then I'll start getting her feeds in here as well. So I can click Follow. When you follow someone, they are notified that you're following them, but that's okay. So I'm going to go back to People again, and I could also search for people. Uh, I'd like you today to search for Richard Byrne, and that's one, going to be one of your assignments that you'll see in your tasks later on. You don't have to do it right now. But the first Richard Byrne you see is the one that'll pop up like this, where he has thousands of followers and he has the Free Tech for Teachers um, blog that he writes. So that's a good one for you to follow and get his information. Another one is Alice Keeler. Those are both in your assignments later. 
So I'm going back to, to people, but if I had someone I hadn't followed before, so for instance, if I just go to people, and I see someone that's been suggested for me, I can follow them here, but I could also go search for them uh, and find someone maybe that I know is in the tech field here that's probably been, been um, recommended. Angela Myers is in the tech field, so I could follow her right here, or if I had, I could have searched for up here. Either way will work. There she is. I would click on her, and then when I see her profile, I can look at her, kind of see the post she has, see if there's something that's interesting, and then I can click to follow. Now I'm following her. I can click it again, and now I can put her in circles. Circles are kind of like your little groups that you can set up. So you can set up a group of your friends, your family, your acquaintances, um, people you're following, so she'll fall in that category. I can also set up custom groups, groups here. So all kinds of groups I can set up, and when I'm done, then I will just finish that, and I think we're good. So here we go, professional as well. So now I'm done. I've got her in two groups, following and professional. Now I go back to people again, and the same will play true for all of these. I can also see who I am following, and when I click on them and see the ones I'm following, I could go back and say, oh, I want to add you know, Mark Wagner to a different circle, and I can add him to a different circle as well. And I can uncheck them if I want to from a circle. And the reason that comes um, into play is sometimes you want to share a post you're creating with just a certain group of people. And then I can see who's following me. So here's a list of all the people who are following me that I could look at if I'm interested, and I can also search them. So that's people. We've done profile. Uh, I want to show you the settings. You have some basic settings. So this is some of your privacy and some of the things that you can go through on your own and choose the settings that are best for you. If you need help, you can always click on help. And the last thing I just want to share with you is, is communities. I love communities. This is sort of my personal learning network in many ways. So the, you'll, you'll see recommended communities, um, um, communities of which you're a member, and communities that you've created. So you can go through all those. You can also search for a topic of interest. So maybe my topic of interest is, let's see, um, let's say the Broncos won the Super Bowl. So we're going to go the Denver. Broncos. Let's see if they have a Google Plus community, and their one is right there. When you're looking at a community to join, what you want to do is kind of see, you know, how many, what the posts are like, how often they're posting. You can also see how many people are following in that community. So I'm going to go on and follow this one. It looks like they've kept it pretty up to date. Looks like it has some interesting facts for me, and I could follow it if I wanted to. I'm actually not going to, but right here is where I could follow it. Uh, and then when I click on the I, I can get more information about it. Gives me some information about their official website, some other information here if I need to report an abuse or something. So that's that community. But I'm going to go back to my communities again. Here are some that um, I am actually have created myself, one that I've created that I, I really have received a lot of response for is iPad Ed. It has 6,000 members here, so you're welcome to join it. If you join it, um, you'll be asked to, um, you'll put in a request to join, and then I will approve you. You can set a community to even be, either be open for anybody to join or to require approval. It can be a private community or a public community. Here's some that are recommended for me. I could look at those and see if there's something that looks of interest to me. Um, these are invitations people have sent me, some others that they think that Google has decided knowing what other types of things I, I search for and look for that might be interested in me um, joining. So here's one on Scratch programming, and I have teachers doing that. I might want to see what's new with Scratch. And now I'm a member of that community, and it will start showing in my feed now. Any posts they make will show up in my feed. Here's another one for Chromebooks in education. They will show up in my feed. I always look to see how many members they have, and then I often look at what their posts are. I didn't for those two, but normally I do. Just before I've, I join a community, I want to make sure it's one that's that's really of value to me. I can always remove them from my groups that I'm following, so that's not a problem if I pick the wrong one. If I wanted to, I could also create a community. So I can create one by clicking here. It takes just a second. I could name it whatever I want to name it. Um, coding and innovation, and I can make it public. People have to ask to join, or they can just join. Um, 
it depends, you know, it depends on if it's if it's for your students, you might you might want people to have to ask, even though you may have set it to be private. Or you can make it public and they ask to join so you can kind of monitor it. Um, sometimes if your community gets really large, you might want to kind of give them enough rope to hang themselves with, let it be public and just remove them if they abuse it. And and Google's really good about finding spam for you and pulling it out and, and flagging it for you to check. So I'm going to click done. That's how easy it is to make my community. I've already created a community. Now I can add an image. I can go in and I can edit my community. I can do some settings for my community. I can add taglines. Lots of great things. And now people, when I invite them, can join. I can go in and just click this little pencil down here to do a post. Coding, robotics, and innovation are all great educational topics. What are you doing in your school related to these topics? And then I could add an image. I could add a link, a place, and I post. And now just like Facebook or something, it's going to be a feed that changes all the time. I could plus one it. I could retweet it. I could comment on it. And I can go on and make this look better with an image and, and do some specific settings. But that's basically how easy it is. I go back to Google Plus again. Now I'm back in my home Google Plus page and I'm back into my feed. So that's a quick overview of Google Plus. I hope you've enjoyed it. I love Google Plus for my personal learning network and for sharing information and connecting with other educators and other professionals. I hope you'll find it of use for you as well. Thank you.